Hey guys, Henning Morton from Flip Normals here. In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can customize the interface and the hotkeys in ZBrush to really speed up your work. Before that, make sure to subscribe and hit the little notification bell. So in this interface you can see is clearly quite different from the default one. And this is something we have spent quite some time getting up to this level where essentially everything we ever need exists here without going through menus. At least the stuff we used like 90% of the time exists right here in the interface. If you don't want to go through and customize this interface, you can download it from the link in the description. This also contains a hotkey list. So you can very easily go to preferences, config and hit load UI and you can go to hotkeys and you can hit load hotkeys as well. So this is, this is what we prefer to work with or something like this. The way to do this is under preferences and um, config and enable customize. So here you can click it and now you see the interface changes a little bit. We have uh, kind of in a meta way, put it in enable customize down in interface so we can more easily do this. So what you can do now is if you find a feature you want, maybe you want delete lower, you can control alt drag if enable customize is enabled, uh, control alt drag and you can drag this into the interface where you want it to be. And now you can control alt drag it into the main UI here or into, um, into the 3D area and to delete it. So it's very easy to actually customize the UI. Once you're done customizing it, you have to hit save UI and store config and that's going to make sure that you can load this in in the future. So let's just cover briefly what this interface looks like. First up here, we have set subtool master because this is something we use a lot and there's no point going under all the way under C plugin for that. Then we removed some of the stuff over here, which we didn't really need like alternate and gradient. And then we also set, um, set up thumbnail and silhouette view. So you can very easily go between this as well. Double, you can't really see any effects here, but if you have single sided polygons, you can easily see this as well. You can change the lighting as well. This is really useful, though this only works if you're using a default material and not a matcap. Then we have the selection tools here, so you can quickly go between them like so. So now whatever you're selecting is just very quickly quick to go between these two. Obviously enable customize because we keep customizing the uh, I keep customizing the interface a lot. So instead of having to go up all the time, I can quickly just do it here. Then we have Dynamesh and Dynamesh, Dynamesh Resolution. Zero mesh as well. This is something Morton and I talked about before. If you should have the legacy feature or the current zero measure, I, I still have the the current zero measure, but uh, the legacy one might give you better results for characters. Then we have the target poly count for for zero measure as well. One feature which is really annoying in Seaverse is symmetry, and we're going to talk a bit more about that under the hotkey section of this. But uh, essentially this allows us to see if symmetry is enabled in a really quick and easy way, because it's a big button and it lights up. Then we have delete hidden, which deletes everything which is not currently visible. Auto groups, which creates another polygroups for different subtools. So if you have um, if you have two subtools like this and hit auto group, now we are going to get different subtools based on them. Yeah, all of this is really just intended to spur, speed up the, the workflows that you do day to day. Now, this might be different. I was working on a hard surface UI as well, which is quite a lot more extensive just because of all the different things you can do with hard surface in ZBrush. This UI here, I would recommend it more for character artists or people that just sort of, sort of solely do sculpting in ZBrush. Yeah, uh, for, for for hard surface, you have so many more specific features, <laughs> yeah. which you would never really use for for this. But this is like a g good generic one. Then we have store morph target, which does exactly that. Then we have fix mesh. This is one of these magical buttons, which if you, for instance, have scan data, it will just fix your mesh. Sometimes you can't bring your model into Maya, for instance. Click fix mesh and the mesh has through magic been fixed. We have mirror, which will uh, flip the object, and then we have mirror and weld. The reason these two are together is because it will always flip, it will always mirror and weld from the, the screen left to screen right. So if you want to go from screen right to screen left, first you just have to flip your object. Then we have subdivision sliders as well. This is, uh, this is the fastest way of actually going between the subdivisions if you have a lot of subdivisions and it's very heavy. So in, uh, in this case here, we have uh, 11 million polys and we have uh, six subdivisions. So instead of going hitting Shift D to go up and down levels like this, you can just 
slide here and now you go to highest levels. Yeah, and with either, even higher poly counts and bigger scenes, sometimes it can actually sh slow the system down quite a lot by hitting shift D and D. So being able to go directly to the subdivision level that you want is just a lot faster. Close holes will close the holes <laughs> and uh, group split will uh, split your object into different subtools. So for instance, if um, we have two subtools like the, or two polygraphs like this, it will split them into separate into separate uh, subtools. Quick little tip as well, just uh, what I just did here is if you hit Control W, it will mask or it will give you a polygroup to whatever is currently masked, which is really useful. Hit Control W to just give a different polygroup to your model as well. Delete morph target and um, close holes, right? We will talk about that. Delete lower, this will delete the lower subdivisions and delete higher will delete the higher subdivisions. So we go all the way to the bottom now, or maybe we want to preserve level three. Now we can hit delete lower and we can hit delete higher. And now we have, uh, this is our real subdivision level now. I use this a lot when it comes to concepting and just bashing out ideas. Gonna do that. Then we have export and with export comes the group button. If you are working in a ZBrush to Maya workflow, you can't have any, any groups enabled. So if you have polygroups like this, let's see if you can actually <laughs> give it a different color. Now, and, and you have um, a new group is enabled. Now this means that your model is gonna completely explode when you take this into Maya. Now there is a fix for this in Maya with the OBJ, you can import it as a whole object, but most of the time we tend to forget. So having the option to turn off groups is just a lot faster in ZBrush. Then we have a pen as well, where we can have a pen, a subtool like this, so we can just have another sphere and we can start sculpting on this right away. There is also the delete button as well. Morton and we're talking about if you should have it or not, <laughs> but there is a weird bug. If you put the delete button in the interface, sometimes it deletes itself. Yeah. It I, deletes the actual button. I've had I've had the delete button in my UI for years, but I, I've stopped using it because sometimes it actually goes even further. Oh yeah. And yeah, using that delete button deletes other parts of the UI. <laughs> You restart ZBrush and everything is fine again, but I find it to be really unreliable. Yeah, so um, put the delete button in the UI at your own peril. So that's essentially how I customize my interface uh, in ZBrush. Uh, you can also delete a bunch of things over here as well. Like you really don't need the vast majority of this. Uh, I keep it here because sometimes I screw up by accident and I want to hit actual and then I go in here or sometimes I want to zoom in like this, but it's very rare. You could really delete the vast majority of everything here. Like you don't need navigation. Like you, these kind of things you, you really don't need because it's, yeah. It's all over here. I just didn't want it to go too crazy, particularly with an interface which we're distributing to other people. For me, uh, everything on the right-hand side there, I've I've nuked that. That's just gone. What I've done instead is I've taken everything on the left-hand side and actually put it on the right-hand side because I'm right-handed and I don't want to have to go across the screen. If you feel like that works for you, uh, you should try experimenting with that as well. Now let's talk about the hotkeys we're using as well. We're keeping it quite light on hotkeys, but the hotkeys I've personally set up are for brushes and some of the most used features. So I'm using, um, for brushes and a solo button, I'm using one, two, six, not on a numpad, but right above the keyboard. And this just speeds up and workflow a lot. So if, if I want to solo, I hit the one key, if I want to have the standard brush, I hit the two key and so on. But let's just quickly talk about how you can set up your own, your own hotkeys. So if you want to uh, hotkey, for instance, um, the standard brush, you can go here and now you can control alt and click on it. And now you can see that it's gonna say uh, tell you that, hey, you can now press any combination of keys to set this to a hotkey. So now you can set this to, for instance, number zero and now it's going to allow you to set this up. I'm not going to set this up because I've already done it, but um, now you can set up hotkeys like this. So control alt click on whatever interface item you want to hotkey, and that keeps it very easy. So for me, let's just go through them. And you can also find this in the description. One is solo, instead of having to go down here, keeps it very easy. Two is standard, three is claim build up, four is move, five is damn standard, and six is trim dynamic. This allows them to go very quickly go between the different brushes without having to go into any B, S, T, B, M, V, whatever it might be. And it also makes our tutorials a lot cleaner as well because you don't see this menu here all the time.
Then an issue with ZBrush, this is not, it's a tricky one. It's more like a UX issue with ZBrush is that um, symmetry is incredibly easy to accidentally disable. So by default, it's set to the X key, which means that if you're sculpting now, let's say you just we just have some subdivisions here and now we're just doing our standard sculpting. And now you hit the Alt key and Alt key is very close to the X key which now means that you have now disabled symmetry. And if you're working over here, you can't necessarily see if symmetry is on or off. That's why we added this toggle here, just to make it easier. But it's very easy for you to sculpt like this, hold down the Alt key, and then you hit the X key, and now symmetry is just disabled, and it's a real pain to get this back. So what I've done is I have remapped uh, enable symmetry to Shift X, can easily do this by going transform and activate symmetry and just shift X here instead. Because now it's not going to, I'm not accidentally going to enable or disable symmetry. So what have I set to the X key then? Well, I've set that to blur mask because this is something I do quite a lot as well, but it doesn't really screw anything up. If I accidentally blur the mask while sculpting, you know, like now I'm hitting the X key, but there was nothing to blur, so it's not a problem. So I highly recommend that you switch symmetry to shift X only problem with that is by default, <laughs> that's set to expose. So if you go to another computer now and you start to sculpt, you're going to explode <laughs> all the models. And if it's really heavy, that's going to take a while. <laughs> and they're like, what did you do? And you're like, yeah, I, I, I screwed up. No, but honestly, the changing, whatever you change it to, change the symmetry, activate symmetry to something else than X, it might seem like, well, why would you ever hit the X key if you're holding down the Alt key? Well, you do. We've been using this for like over 10 years and trust us, it's a problem. It's not just a problem for us, it's a problem for everyone. And then the last thing I, oh, second last thing on hotkey is I set, I set the control S to tool and save as. The reason is because I don't use projects, I use exclusively tools, which is a whole different debate. And the very last one, I set this, this is a bit of a weird one, but under document and uh, export, this is set to control Q. So this just means now that I can hit control Q and now I can set this to JPEG and then we can export out a quick uh, an image very quickly. This is really useful whenever you're presenting your work. Control Q, save your work, control Q, another angle and so on. So yeah, it's uh, this setup here saves me so much time, both when it comes to the interface and when it comes to the hotkeys as well. This is something I've, I've been working on for many years, and this is this is my day-to-day -day setup. Yeah, you don't really know what you need to use until you've started using the tool for a while. So, you know, it, it'll definitely change for you as well. Once you start using this, you might find a lot of this to be redundant. If you do, remove it and then replace it with, you know, whatever else you have in there. I think one other thing we should mention just as a bonus item is under document, you can actually change both the size of your document, but also the color of your document. Sometimes you don't want to look at the, let's call it the beautiful ZBrush gradient, right? So changing the color in here, like the range, for example, is at the zero at the moment. Uh, I think by default, the range is at 2.25 or something like that. Uh, changing the range to zero or color picking any item from the interface is allows you to set your own background color. Yeah, this is very handy as well. We also set our this the, the document size to to be the exact size of our of what's currently here. If we set this to something tiny, if we do something like something stupid small like this and we hit uh, uh, new document. Now we're going to have the tiniest document in the world. So now you can see the problem with this is we're actually way outside here and this might be what you have by default. So a fix for this is to set this to W size, new document, and that's going to automatically scale it. So now you, we currently have a document which is nice and big. So yeah, I guess it was like a last bonus tip, last little <laughs> bonus tip for you there. So yeah, I make sure you uh, you you download this interface if you don't want to set this up yourself. You can check that from the link in the description with both the interface and the hotkeys. And we'd love to hear how you are customizing your own version of ZBrush, and we could we could modify our own based on your suggestions because we're always open to learning more things in ZBrush. And please send us screenshots on Twitter of all your horrible colored ZBrush <laughs> interfaces because. Uh, of that that's a monstrosity to look at sometimes i love watching what people do with the colors in zbrush <laughs> so yeah thank you so much for watching make sure to subscribe like and click the little notification bell and leave a little comment about what you thought about the video as well
So if you're looking for training or high quality assets, make sure to stop by the Flip Normals Marketplace. And if you're interested in supporting us by buying our merchandise, you can check that out in the description below.